All right, so recap of the game. I think first off, you know, as I've, you know, mentioned, and, you know, the crowd was really to our advantage, which is what, you know, the goal has been. I mean, it impacts recruiting. You know, you hear it from recruits, what they say after games. Um, not just what maybe you think when they watch on TV, but when they're here, and, and it impacted the game. I mean, there's three penalties on them on offense, two false starts, and really a legal shift that to me is a false start as well, um, not being set, that could be credited to the crowd. So, you know, you can say they won the game. So that's um, the way we want it to be. And so that's an awesome job. But like we tell our players, all right, do it again. So not getting ahead of this week, but the next home game, you know, we're walking up just – Kyle just said it was announced the same time, same network, same everything. So let's redo that from an atmosphere standpoint in the exact same way, regardless of what teams are ranked or any of that. Because um, it dramatically impacts our program. Um, you know, besides just the players, as I mentioned, in recruiting. And, and it's huge. So let's do it again. As far as the play on the field, our defense, <clears throat> you know, probably better than even felt. It was. Um, watching the film, we just missed some tackles, some poor tackling techniques, but really made a ton of significant plays, played extremely physical with really great effort. Um, you know, some high effort plays on there um, from sacks to the safety. That was great to see. And, you know, not a good offensive second half. And we've got to close people out. And, <clears throat> regardless of rankings, any of that, like when you have a chance to finish off games, and it may be even earlier than that, you know, you go up 14 nothing, let a kickoff return, give them all the momentum. So there's tons of times in there where you can make a game so it's not close in the end, and we, we did not do that. And so, you know, you can't, your analytics will catch up to you, you know, that way. You know, when you play a bunch of games like that, that come down to one play here or there, and, um, you know, that's not what you want to do. But glad that we won. Glad that we were able to show them today how this could have went other ways and why we've got to get better in all these areas. Um, so um, I guess awards. Uh, Q was freshman of the week, he said, and uh, he did play well. And... Um, and Micah was the offensive lineman of the week, which I don't know how they come up with that, but you know they got that right as far as he did play great for a first start. He played great whether it was first start or not. Really physical, the way we talk about straining to finish, finishing people, um, you know, with a violent attitude, and that was awesome to see. So we pointed him out today in the film, told our players again, this is how you're supposed to do in this program. You know, you work hard. You know, you wait for your turn, you don't complain, you know, and um, the guy did exactly that. And his turn came up and he made the most of it. You talked a little bit about it after the game and, and some just now, but having watched the film back, what did you see from the offensive perspective? What kind of led to the struggles in that second half? Well, there's some red zone, um, which actually is, you know, a year ago was an issue. You I know, mean, we were very poor in the red zone, even though we scored a lot of points. Um, for the season and we had done really good in the red zone this year and so you know not finishing off drives um, you know we got a number of plays where it's just one thing here or there and you know some some, some more runs can really break if we're just patient with them and, and hit where they're supposed to go and and you know we got to finish off drives and I'm not complaining about it there's games that you know, you get breaks, and there's games you don't get breaks. And from the referee part, you know, we didn't, a lot of things went against us. So, um, a very close calls that can go either way, and you're going to have some games where you benefit from that. So, um, you know, we've, we've got to not leave it up to that and, you know, make the plays ourselves. You mentioned Micah Pettis. I'm just curious, where has he kind of developed the most since he got here, and what has he done, I guess, recently to kind of put himself in the spot that? He's in now. Yeah, probably as big a development as we've been around over a year. 
um, from a guy that came here redshirted, uh, looked a long ways away from playing a year ago, and you know, I asked him this summer when he was doing so much better, you know, early in camp, he looked so much better. He just said, he, you know, like a lot of these kids, his first time in his life not playing and not traveling and, you know, just reflected on all of his habits and work ethic and, and just completely changed himself um, mentally and physically. And it's awesome to see. I mean, not too many times, you know, you got two freshman tackles and, you know, the guy has to make his first start in a big SEC game and play that well. Lane, you guys brought Caleb in late in the first half. We were having some struggle with um, snaps. How big of a concern is that kind of moving forward, developing some depth at that position with him obviously not being completely 100%? Yeah, he, he was not 100%. Um, he was kind of in emergency only situation and the snaps kind of put us in that situation. Now he did, we obviously communicated with him. He felt really good in warmups after not really doing anything all week and you know, said he was ready to go, and so um, he went in there not 100%. But, you know, even with him, the snaps have been an issue. They were definitely an issue in the game, and that's hard to play quarterback. I mean, there's some things where, you know, we're going to get down on him on reading a play, and he's got to read then whether to give the ball for a touchdown or not. And then, but when you watch it, he's down here looking for the ball. So um, the snaps are very important. I think we did something today that I think will help. And, We'll see if it does Saturday. How do you teach your team not to overlook a team like Vanderbilt and not to buy into that rat poison coming off of a top 10 win? Yeah, we spent a lot of time this morning on that. Um, you know, just like last week, we said you got to prepare the same regardless. You know, last week, everybody built up the game and everything, told them, well, you know, it's faceless opponent of that. It's not just when you play a team that's, you know, not ranked and that you're favored heavily favored with you know it's both ways and so that way you avoid playing like this so hopefully they listen and um it happens every week like i told them look at you know i don't think anybody thought georgia was going to go in and struggle uh, like they just did at missouri so it happens every week every game's independent of each other and now we're we teach them as you see in our games every quarter is independent of the quarter before, let alone the games before. Lane, he had played guard before, but you guys had to shift Jeremy James down to the inside. Just your your thoughts on how he played and uh, maybe what the future holds there with Pettis doing so good at, at the tackle spot. Uh, I don't know that exactly, um, where we're headed. Um, the good thing is we have some guys that can play multiple positions um, like him and Ideally, we'd really like to get more than five. The game has changed. I think that, I mean, this is just me, and I've said it now for two years. I think the defenses have figured out the rotations up front to play tempo teams, and they, they play their starting players 50 60% of the game, and they rotate. And I think that has something to look at our fourth quarter scoring. I can't imagine there's, I don't know the stats exactly, but there can't be many teams, if any, that have a bigger first half margin in scoring than what we do um, against our opponents. And then we lose our fourth quarter, you know, 17-7 or something like that, or we scored seven or 10 points. So I do think part of that's slowing down when we've been ahead. But I do think that the line, I've said it since off season, if we could rotate guys, we'd be a lot better because we're playing play 75, 80, play 80, at 300 and some pounds, and the guy I'm playing against is on play 40. So I think there's something to that, and I think it shows on the tape um, up front how the end of the game up there looks versus the beginning of the game. Lane, five games in, just how do you feel about how your receivers have done, and what do you think about the rotation and how the reps are shaping out? Uh, I think they've, they've done a really good job, you know, really – a mixed group from all over the place. Um, so I think we are deeper there than we've been. I know we are deeper there than we've been. Um, and that's really without Jalen doing much because of injury. Uh, he, he's been hurt uh, in camp and most of the season. And I think he's, he's back to full strength now. So, um, you know, I, I think that group, just like this team, like I've said, has a chance to be really special because 
it's like a late, all these NBA free agents coming together and, you know, they usually play better at the end of the year when they've had more time together. So I'm hoping that we get better uh, because of that, because the guys getting used to how we do things and fitting in and getting more comfortable and a new quarterback getting more comfortable with them. How have you seen Quinchon kind of respond to the added reps with Zach being limited, Ulysses being out? How is he responding to more responsibility than he maybe would have expected? Yeah, he's great. <clears throat> um, he was really struggling early in the week um, physically, you know, from all the pounding two weeks ago. Uh, but he was better by the end of the week. And, um, and he, he was good today, even though it was a walkthrough and um, didn't take the pounding that he took the week before. So he's doing a phen phenomenal job. Looking at the film, how did you evaluate Jackson's performance as what he kind of called the biggest game he's ever played in at the college level? Just how did you feel he responded to that moment? I think Jackson, outside of the interception, which was horrible, um, you know, did the big, big things really well. Um, made some really big throws, some really, you know, off balance throws, having to fade back and lobbing them over there. Um, there were some little things that really could have broke the game open that if he would have done right, um, you know, that will, will come as he gets, you know, more experience. But I thought that for a game like that, and, um, that, that he, he did really well. Lane, according to these nifty notes, you're the fastest coach to reach 20, 20 wins at Ole Miss since Johnny bought uh, in 1947 through 1949. Any comment about that, or what, how is it? What's the process been like to get to a record like that? I, I don't know. Um, I, I don't think about those things. There's a lot of old num old years that get floated around of this hasn't been done before and the home winning streak and all that. So. You know, we're just trying to get to one and zero each week, um, and if you do have really good records, that means that you got really good coaches and players, you know, um, around you. So we got a lot of work to do. As we all know, the schedule was lighter up front than it is at the end. So we have got to improve and and got to get better. I know the video with Partridge kind of went viral. There is that the guy you see every day in practice, or was that something kind of unique from him? That was pretty unique. That, that was really cool. Um, you know, I was excited after the game and, you know, but then I kind of always have that after 30 minutes, I come back and get mad about what we could have done better, you know, and finish the game out on offense and, and not have to go through all that. But I actually saw that video and it made me smile. So uh, that, that was really cool to see. Um, then I found an old picture of, um, or I, I found a picture of Charlie's um, baby and so he kind of has the same look on his face that Charlie did when he was when he was hugging Partridge. So it was pretty, I sent that to the staff together. It's pretty cool. Son Maverick and Charlie, and they looked exactly like with their face. You mentioned the freshman of the week honors for Quinchon. What has it been like to watch him take over at his age? I just, it's just unique. Um, and you would not guess that being around him, his personality um, is very calm, very quiet. Uh, so you wouldn't, you know, personality-wise, you wouldn't guess that. He's one of those, you know, the most unique we had was Troy Palomalo was, like, unbelievable, like, off the field. And then, like, he would, the switch would go, and he'd just want to knock everybody out on the field. And Q kind of reminds me of that, you know, off the field. So uh, it's really neat. He was raised really well. Just talking to people around Vanderbilt, they'll, they'll tell you they think they're improving, that, that the culture's changing a little bit there, even though the wins don't necessarily show it. When you look at them on film, do they look different than maybe they did in your first year? Uh, yeah, definitely, than my first year. Um, they're, they're way better. And the scores of our game the first year versus on the road up there, you know, um, that they really struggled in a lot of areas. And then last year was competitive. And so I always say, you know, an Alabama-Georgia game can be an outlier, especially when it's one of the years when they got a great quarterback <clears throat> like Alabama. So you can't, you can't take that because once they, their personnel is so great that once it gets rolling, the game gets lopsided. So <clears throat> um, they've been very competitive outside of that game.
All right, guys. Thanks. Thanks.